The goal of this video is to make some topography. And what I mean by that is I want to create a map that shows um, where these towns are, but kind of in relation to the landscape. And this is called an elevation model. It's a type of raster that records the height of any individual pixel kind of from um, a vertical datum, which just means from sea level. So you might be wondering, well, where is this? Um, if we turn back on this vector layer, you'll see we've got Mount Desert Island up here, and maybe that can kind of clue you in to see that, well, that's funny, I don't see a coastline, so where, where's the coast? Well, if we take our information tool up here, let's come grab this, it says Identify Features, and I click that, and I have to make sure I have my the proper layer selected, kind of activated, so I'm gonna have the digital elevation model um, activated. And I'm gonna zoom in here, and go right next to where I know that this is an island, just because I'm from Maine. I know that this is Mount Desert Island, um, MDI, as we call it. And if I click around on the island, I'm going to get this result that uh, this is, has a value of 56. So these pixels in here have different values, and they seem to be positive. And if I kind of just keep clicking along, as I go off of the island, they start to get negative. So what that means is that this is an elevation model that records above and below kind of um, sea level. And the reason I put the underscore and the M here is that these units are in meters. So this is means 30 meters above sea level, and this means 55 meters below sea level. And it's important to know kind of what the, um, uh, what the units are of your elevation model so that if you end up running different terrain commands, you know what you're dealing with. If you were to make contours, for instance, you wouldn't want to put in a 10 value thinking you were getting every 10 feet because in this case it would be 10 meters. We're not going to make contours though. What I'd like to do is to make a raster that shows me land and ocean. So I want to turn this elevation model um, into another raster. I'm going to run a tool to make a brand new raster and I'd like to make a, a binary, which means a zero or a one, so that instead of all of these height values, I just have one raster that says zero for, let's just say for ocean, and one for land. Well, that's nice because I can actually do that with um, a tool called Raster Calculator. So I'm gonna open Raster Calculator. If you didn't see that, it's under the Raster, um, it's under the Raster dialog here, the, the Raster toolbox. And it's the first one because it's really useful and we use it a lot. Raster calculator, select that. And this is just a big calculator because, because I'm working with a giant image, I can kind of just run commands on this image. Every single pixel has a value, hopefully you remember. And I don't know if you can imagine what I'm going to do, but I'm going to say I want the elevation model. But what do I want from that elevation model? I want to separate everything that's positive and negative. So I'm going to say everything greater than zero, assuming that that's going to return me um, a true value, a one, for every place that's land. So I go, I'm going to save this as a new raster and put it into my project file here, my workshop. And I'll call this land. This will be my land, my land file here. So I've got my elevation model, it's greater than zero. I'm gonna call it land, it's a geotiff. Everything should be good to go. So if you get that, go ahead and hit okay. And it should run and voila, I have a new file that has zero. And this is actually one, but the computer default is just being a little funky here. Um, I've got a land file that's brand new. Um, one right here means land and zero means um, ocean. And that's because Raster Calculator always kind of spits out a Boolean if you if you give it a, um, a logical or inequality expression like we just did. We said DEM greater than zero and it returned to us this this new raster where every pixel now instead of height values represents true false zero and one values for yes land or a no land. So that's great. I've got my land raster, and I'm going to use that later to kind of represent my terrain. Um, but I'm going to shut that off now because I, I want to do one more 
raster before I symbolize and kind of make my topography. And what I want is I want a something that makes this landscape look ruffled. And that's called a hill shade. A hill shade kind of helps us see this as a 3D object. Right now we can kind of see that there must be some type of height value going on, but it's a little confusing. It looks pretty marbly to look at alone. So I'm going to run another tool, and it's a terrain tool. And if you go up to your raster toolbox and you don't see this terrain analysis um, sub toolbox, you might want to go to your um, plugins. This happens on Mac sometimes for some reason. You can go to manage and install plugins and then just search for the terrain, T-E-R-R-A-I-N. Just type that in and make sure that box is checked on. For the, for the most part, you'll, you should always have the terrain analysis toolbox kind of underneath the raster um, heading. So terrain analysis and hillshade, we're going to select that. That's very good. Hillshade, I'm going to create a hillshade from my digital elevation model. It wouldn't really do very much to try to make a hillshade from the land because that, that just that's a, a zero and one um, binary and it, it would get confused because the tool needs to have elevation values in order to cast um, light across it and kind of model um, the three dimensions. So I've got my elevation layer, digital elevation model underscore meters, and my output, I'm going to call this, um, I'm just going to call it a hillshade because that's the, the file I'm trying to make. It's going to be a geotiff. And then you wonder probably, what is this parameter here? It says z-factor. Well, a z-factor just means the computer is wondering if your vertical units, your z units, meaning the height, if that is the same unit as your kind of xy units. And we, our vertical units are in meters, and our horizontal units, meaning the dimensions of the actual pixels, how wide and how tall they are, those are in meters as well. So that means that our z-factor is one to one. We have the same units for the x and the y, and the same units for the z, the height. If they were different, let's say for some reason our, our digital elevation model um, had values in feet, then we would want to use a, a unit con, uh, kind of a unit multiplier here to convert uh, meters to feet or feet to meters, um, vice versa. This allows you this illumination here allows you to control kind of how the hill shade will look. Um, the standard is 300 degrees, zero being north, 90 east, 180 south. 270 west and 360 is north again. So 300 is somewhere around north uh, west northwest, um, which is just kind of the standard, and it's it's normal. So I would I would stay within the west to north range, but you can fuss around with that that direction um, as much as you want. And 40 means 40 degrees off the horizon. So let's just run it, and you'll see what I'm talking about. You run the tool, and you get this kind of very strange looking ruffled thing. So let's make this look more kind of like a like a landscape. What I'd like to do is create kind of one group of layers that is going to be my topography. So I'm going to click this and shift click all three so that I have them selected and right click and say group. And I, you'll see what I'm doing here in a second. Um, so I just grouped those by shift clicking all three and kind of grouping the selected. And now I'm going to take this group and rename it. And I'm going to call it um, topography. And I don't know if you can see, but all we see right now is the hill shade. And I actually want to kind of combine this elevation model in the hill shade so that the higher places kind of look higher and the darker places look darker, um, so darker to light. Um, but I also want the ruffled look as well. So I'm going to put the hill shade kind of down here on top of the DEM. And I think I'm going to, um, I'm actually going to make the DEM a little quieter. And what I mean by that is make it a little fainter. I want to make the topography like a background. So I need to make it very faint and kind of quiet. So I go right click my DEM. I'm going to go to properties and remember how to do this because we're going to be going into the properties of every layer very frequently. So I go properties and I'm going to go to the setting transparency 
And in order to make this faint, uh, this layer fainter, I'm going to just drag the transparency to about 70 and hit apply. And you'll see that the elevation model has almost disappeared, but it's still there. So I say OK. I like that. Transparency at 70. OK. And I'm going to do the same thing to the hill shade. I'll go right click the hill shade or control click on a Mac. I'm going to go to properties. And then let's just see what 70 looks like on this as well. So I go to 70 and say apply. And I don't know if you can notice, but they've kind of combined a little bit. And that's nice. I th the mountains are higher. The ocean is lower. I think I'm going to give it even more transparency. I'm going to go up to, let's try 85, and I hit apply. Yeah, very, very, very soft. But I kind of like it. I like it like that. Um, this is a preference thing. Um, I like the, the darker tones and the lower coming through more and the lighter tones coming through higher. Um, play with those transparencies and see what you like. Um, I'm going to say OK. And so now what I'd like to do is I'd like to have this land file um, tinge the land to be green and tinge the um, kind of ocean to be blue. So I don't know if you can guess what I'm going to try to do, um, but I'm going to make this layer transparent as well so that our hill shade and our elevation model show through. So it's going to be transparent, but I'm actually going to change these two colors to blue and to green. So I want all of the white pixels that have a value of 1 to be green and all the black pixels with a value of 0 to be blue. So to do that we go into the land and we go to properties and then from here we're going to style and we'll learn more about all of this later but for now just go to the single band pseudo color. When we paint rasters the colors we want we always go to single band pseudo color. So we do that and we're going to add a value, and that value will be 1. Oopsie. 1. And we're going to call that land. And the color, we double click, and it brings up another window. And I'm just going to choose green and make it dark. OK. So I've got my green land. I'm going to add another class. And that's already at 0. And I'm going to make this a blue, a dark blue, OK. And I'm going to call this Ocean. And if I hit Apply, I think you'll see what happens. I hit Apply and voila, there I go. I've got some very dramatic looking um, coastline. But so now what I'm going to do is I can't see anything underneath it because it's completely opaque. It's, it's not transparent at all. So now I go to the transparency setting and let's just see what happens if I put this at 50. Hit apply, and it's starting to look more respectable. Um, I'm going to make it even more transparent. Make it somewhere around 75. Apply, and it's starting to look pretty good. Um, we'll fuss with this a little later, but I think that's good for now. I just want you to see how you can kind of turn data into something that looks like a map. We see green for land, blue for water, and we see the topography both below sea level and above sea level. And we'll mess around with that in our final map. But for now, I think it's pretty cool. You can see that you've got a topography layer that shows um, what's going on underneath um, all of our towns. So on to the town